Good morning, nature lovers. I'm delighted to have you here with me this morning as I take you on a summer wilderness adventure. Um, I know with COVID and everything, you know, there's a need to get out and I encourage people to get out and go onto nature trails and things like that. But it is hot, it's summertime, some people can't get out or for other reasons won't get out. And there's places you can't go. Places maybe you'd love to go, but maybe you're a little scared or you shouldn't go because it's like off trail and there might be things there to scare you. So I am gonna take you on an adventure today and take you into these places. So join me. I think most of us are aware of the importance of prescribed fire in Florida. If you're not, prescribed fire is a very important land management tool. And what I wanna to do today is take you out to a place that we burned with a prescribed fire earlier this year. Those of you who tuned into that saw that we had burned this entire area, this 10 acre area, which is a core area of the Arboretum next to the pavilion, just across from parking garage C. Uh, so I wanna take you back in to this area and we'll just go along. Some things you can see from the trail. So for those of you who wanna come out, please come out. And then I'll go off trail in certain areas. Uh, and I'll show you before we do that, there's a precaution we all need to take. I'm wearing my snake boots today. There's a snake in my boots. And you really can't go off trail without this and you should be with somebody you know or trust or if you know the area very well. So always wear your snake boots. But I'm gonna take you to these areas. We're gonna see some great things. We're looking mostly for plants and animals. Um, some of the animals are hard to chase, like butterflies, and the plants stay put, which is cool. So, stay tuned. So you can see a lot of diversity there. There is a lot of plant diversity in there. I am actually out off trail where you shouldn't go unless you have your snake boots on. There are rattlesnakes in here, people, so let's be cautious. But you can see, just after a burn, this area could be covered with that saw palmetto, which is right there. If that gets overgrown, it really crowds out a lot of other stuff. If you burn more frequently, you open up spots in between. And here you can see some beautiful, we've got this beautiful helianthus. Look at this thing. That's a native Florida sunflower right there. Just absolutely gorgeous. And then you see the wiregrass in here, a little wiregrass, lots of ferns, very open. This little wet spot, there's even a little, it uh, looks like a uh, maybe a black oak over there. And then the longleaf pine, obviously. So this is a cool little spot, just a little low spot in the scrub right off the main trail. And uh, you can see the kind of plant diversity that supported here that wouldn't be if we didn't burn. Okay, I didn't make it far. There's this beautiful um, flower here, this little ironweed. It's like a little scrub ironweed. I'm sorry I don't know the species here, people. I'm going to have to look it up. But it's got the beautiful like ironweed purple flower on top. You can see, beautiful. Uh, a nice little plant. You can see the thin little leaves that are on the stem. Very cool. There's Elliot's milk pea here, one of our native. Uh, we're going to look at some of those, I'm sure, later. So this is a cool little spot where we've got a lot of diversity. Here's Pityopsis here. And then we got the fern. There's a lot of good stuff in here, a lot of native. There's maybe a couple weedy things, but looking mostly good. And then over here we have the goldenrod, and we're gonna see more of that as we go out there too. Look at this beautiful goldenrod. Goldenrod's a fall bloomer, but in Florida it's wet. We get a good summer bloom too. Doesn't have a lot of pollinators on it right now. There's just little blooms of them here and there. There's a little butterfly. But at any rate, so those are the kind of things that are popping up right now. Okay, here I am on the wildflower loop, just across from the stadium. This is what it looks like from here. You're on the trail. Trails needs to be mowed here a little bit, but you're on the trail. Just off to the side, we have a wonderful stand of a native Florida plant. I have to show it to you. It's a uh, elephant's foot. Um, I think it's elephant topus uh, alatus. You see it has little basil leaves at the bottom. It's got a little basil rosette, nice stalk, stem. And then the flowers are really cool. It's like this triangular bract. And uh, see if I can get, see the cool flower here. These are kind of flowered out, but see that? Look at those cool flowers they have. That's a very good uh, native pollinator uh, nectar source in the fall. You can see it's really, you really can't maybe notice, but there's a really good stand of it in here. <laughs> and uh, it's right along the trail. Okay, here's a beautiful Florida sensitive briar, the mimosa. Um, you'll have to take my word on it. There was just a big, beautiful bumblebee on it. I'm not sure which species, but a beautiful little flower. And another important thing is it is a leg, and you can see it's got a very twiny, the leaf is like that but it is a legume, I mean, it's a leg leguminosae. So it fixes nitrogen, and usually leguminosae are also good uh, food source for baby butterflies. And I think there's a blue butterfly in the blue, fa in the blue family that uh, has um, this as its larval host. So very often these little plants support. Legumes are very good for, uh, very good food support for butterfly larvae. I wanna show you folks really what I'm here for. I found an endangered species. This is a Florida endangered vining flower. It is Centrosema arenicola, 
and uh, it's got this beautiful uh, shaped flower. Uh, it's not to be confused with Centrosema virginianum, which is the more common. I think it's called butterfly pea. Again, it's in the legume family, so what do we know about it? Its leaves are probably used by native butterflies for the larval food source. Here's the leaf, and leaf coming off a vine, and you can see the vine twisting around the stem there. That's how they grow. Very exciting. Okay, I, I don't know if I can really capture the beauty of flowering wiregrass. It's kind of one of those otherworldly phenomenon. But fire, uh, wiregrass is a central component of the ground cover of the entire longleaf forest, really. If you think of the southeastern coastal plain, biodiversity, longleaf pine, wiregrass, big part of it here, folks. You burn, it needs to burn to seed to uh, go flower. And that means if it, you burn, it flowers more, which means what? Well, it produces more seed. It's got a beautiful narrow leafed clump in the middle and then when it flowers it's got these shimmery I, you know that's the part that's hard to get on film they have these shimmery inflorescence that is wire grass well this is wonderful i've stumbled upon a gopher tortoise burrow absolutely wonderful looks pretty fresh i know he's been down there you can kind of see there's some markings on the entrance to it so it's an active burrow just you can tell by the digging very nice little spot you see the tortoises really love this open diverse habitat which really you can only maintain through fire and that's what i'm most proud about our fire program uh, that's what i'm most proud about about our fire program is that we have just had so much success at just really pushing the envelope on how much biodiversity we can support in these systems how much value we can bring and demonstrate and that can be done it's, it's really phenomenal and of course i give all the credit to my team of people that work for me that i just barely oversee so <laughs> thank you all here you can see a burned opening in a more mesic area. And by mesic we mean wet. Mesic is middle. And mesic ecosystems are in the middle in terms of their wetness. Where we were before, most of what we looked at so far is up in the xeric, more xeric end, which is dry xeric. Then we have mesic and then we're going into a wetland. That's the most exciting part. And that's the part I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking most of you wouldn't be interested in walking in there. So I'm gonna take you in there. Okay. Now we're coming up into the edge of the wetland. I, I, gotta, I gotta go in, folks. We're in water now. I've spent a lot of my time in water in wetlands in Florida, particularly in South Central Florida, down around the Okeechobee area, uh, and in environs, and also local ones as well. I spent a lot of time in wetlands in my day. Don't be afraid. I'll take you there, but you gotta get your feet wet, unless you have your relatively waterproof snake boots on. We're gonna go over to this meadow of redroot. Uh, I do wanna show you a redroot. I think it's Lacnanthes. Here's the genus, look at this beautiful plant. And the flower head, oh my gosh, look at that. And in fact, there's some butter, big butterflies on them over there. I see some swallowtails and some other things fluttering around on the big stand over there. So I'll take you over there. I think these are called bog buttons, you know, uh, bog buttons for obvious reasons. We're in a wetland, they're kind of hard to get a good picture of the flower there. But they're like little buttons, look at them, little white buttons through there, see them? Very cool. And then a lot of the big native grasses, Andropogon virginicus through here. And then we're gonna open up into this huge stand of, and I'll try to capture, I don't know if you can see some of those butterflies out there. We'll just try to show you that, but um, we'll also walk up to uh, the wetland through this side and show the transition on this side. Um, those look like they could be Palamedes, swallowtails. I'm gonna act like I know, just, you know, to be clever. But, oh my gosh, they're just beautiful. There's two of them, you see this one here, and there's one over there. I mean, that's, and you got an army you have an army of dragonflies that you can't even see because they're just moving around. But you know what that's like, army of dragonflies. That means that there's a lot of prey, food sources. Dragonfly is a top predator. If there's a swarm of dragonflies over a wetland, it means there's a lot of food source, there are a lot of insects coming out of it. So these ecosystems are so important from an ecosystem productivity point of view. Let's, let's just put the diversity side aside for a minute, the ecosystem productivity standpoint. Look at this beautiful, this lightnanthes in here. There's the swallowtails. I'm so glad I could bring you here today. I'm so glad I could bring you out here. I know that so many of you have never in your life stood in the middle of a red root marsh, but it is, it's something to behold, people. It is something to behold. I believe, I believe this is Rhynchospora. I guess, again, again, I'm gonna pretend like I'm the authority. Uh, I got this wonderful op open, uh, loose heads on the top of it. It's a very tall sedge. Uh, sedges have edges, don't forget, very often sedges have three sides, three-sided stems, if you're ever wondering. They look like grasses, but no, they're sedges. They're wetland plants. So that's a beautiful uh, beak rush. You'll find it in here. See little beaks on the flower. It's very cool. 
and you see more meadow beauties over there as well. So here we're transitioning back up to the upland in this wetland. And there is another butterfly. Oh my gosh, it's a buckeye. Oh, hold still. No, you're not seeing that. You know, I never get to see a buckeye like this. Hmm, maybe the rattlesnakes are in here. You can see I've come up in the scrub. It's a little bit more of an impenetrable barrier. <laughs> there's the wetland behind us, right? Beautiful little bell, oh, there's the butterflies. Anyway, you come around this way and you gotta cut. This is where the snakes are. This is where the rattlesnakes are. Little open sunny spots on the edge where they aren't too wet, but they're still close to things they can eat or take a chunk out of. Just kidding, the chances of, if you're careful, you gotta watch for snakes, but they generally won't leave you alone. Okay, we're coming out on this side. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the longleaf pine ecosystem. Um, I think it's very important for us to understand that, a couple young longleaf pines here, uh, that the longleaf pine ecosystem once covered a vast portion, 90 million acres of land in the southeastern United States. It is an extremely biodiverse ecosystem. I would rate the destruction of the longleaf pine ecosystem uh, equal to the destruction of the Amazon in terms of its ecological importance. And we already did this. You know, we look at the Amazon and we think about saving the Amazon rainforest and the diversity and the lungs of the earth, but we participated in the destruction of the longleaf pine. And now there's a big movement to try to restore it, understand it, support the species. And that's what we're doing out here with our prescribed fire program. Again, longleaf pine had a lot of value. Uh, the land itself, if you cleared it, it was a pretty open canopy. Now this is even more open. Very often it was a 60% uh, open canopy, 40% open canopy. And it's a, it's a system that uh, basically completely exists on fire. Fire is absolutely essential for it. All of the species that live out here in the most diverse parts of longleaf pine are completely dependent on fire, which occurred naturally at the end of the dry season throughout the Southeast creating some of the most interesting and ecologically important uh, ecosystems in the world. There's the longleaf pine. Look at that majestic thing. Okay, here we are on the other side. This would be the southeastern, more corner of the 10 acre, I think this is the wildflower loop that we're on. Uh, relatively small walk, but I'm taking you into these different wetlands to show you how different these wetlands are. This is on the other side. We've called this the Nissa Palm because it does have some Nissa sylvatic, I believe, the Tupelo over there and it's got a sweet gum in the background so it got kind of some hardwood wet wet loving trees and then you've got this wonderful array of grasses again little asters that are in here some red root not as much you even have ferns in the middle this is really cool i'm going to show you a really cool grass here which is saccharum giganteum this grass gets like six feet tall in the fall it will get very tall have a big inflorescence on the top of it it's all through here it's a big beautiful stand of it here you can kind of see some of the leaves there, really great plant. And we've also got pitcher plant here. And I believe these pitcher plants were put here. We do have pitcher plants out in the woods and some beautiful ones out in, in some wild areas. But I think this, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but this is this little pitcher plant. And it has a little uh, entry to it. The insects can go in and then the plant traps the insects and it, it ends up digesting them. It gets some of its nutrition that way. Pretty cool wetland plant here in Florida, and this is the one wetland where we can come that's kind of close to home and, and show people. Very cool, but there are some really nice ones out in the, in the big swamp wetlands on campus. Blue stem and goldenrod. There's one of those banded dragonflies on top of there. Yeah. See how close we can get before he goes. Oh yeah, oh yeah, gotcha. Folks, I'm so happy that I could take you out on this little wilderness adventure today. I hope you feel like you learned something, and I hope you think that you got to see some really beautiful things that you probably wouldn't otherwise see, because those are some really cool places I took you to and, and some cool things we saw. But the other thing I want you to take home from this is that these kind of beautiful places that you have access to right here on UCF campus don't just happen by themselves. We have a phenomenal arboretum and natural resource team and landscape team here, and that group works together to implement one of the most cutting edge natural resource conservation programs on a big metropolitan campus like this of anywhere in the world. We're doing just an outstanding job. So kudos to those guys. We manage for these outcomes. The biodiversity we have out there and the life that we're supporting is an outcome that we are seeking through our management. And we're doing what we think is uh, the best we can. So kudos to my team and I hope everybody uh, has a wonderful weekend.